Good afternoon, dear learners. My name is Dr. Sumit Prasad, and in this particular session, we will be discussing about two concepts. These are demands and supply. This session is divided into two parts. In the first part, we will be covering the concept of demand, and on the second part, we will be co covering the concepts of supply. Now, before proceeding further, let me revise you the basic concept of economics. The economist tries to answer a basic problem of the society which is scarcity of resources and multiplicity of demand. It means that there are limited resources in the economy and the demands of the society is increasing day by day. So what does economics do? Economics tries to create a bridge between the scarcity of resources and multiplicity of demand, which means it provides a solution of what to produce, how to produce and for whom to produce. Now, answering to this problem, we are also aware of the fact that in an economy, there are basically three, uh, three players in the economy, which are labor, capitalists and government. Now, these three players play very various and crucial role in a society or in an economy. Now, proceeding further with this, with the concept of demand, what is demand? We might have heard the concept that I want to purchase a car, I want to purchase an iPhone. So, does this, uh, does this statement make it a demand? No, it does not make it a demand because demand is comprises of three basic variables. These three basic variables are desire, ability and willingness. Now, let me first define these three variables for you. Desire means a particular wish to purchase something from the market. It means that if I say I want to purchase a car, so this is a desire. Now, how does the desire can convert into demand? It can be converted into demand if I have the ability to purchase that particular car. If I say I want to purchase a car, I want to purchase a Maruti 800 car, and if it is if it costs around uh, it, it costs around uh, five lakh of rupees, and I am having that ability of purchasing that car because I am having that five lakh of rupees, it means that it can be converted. The desire can be converted into demand. But again, there is a third variable which which uh, makes the decision of making the desire a demand or not and the third variable is known as willingness it means that if i am having a sum of rupees 5 lakh and i am having a desire of purchasing a car which cost 5 lakh then the third variable willingness it answers that am i having this willingness to spend these 5 lakh of rupees on the purchase of the particular car if i it means that if i if i am willing to pay these 5 lakh rupees for the purchase of the particular car then the, the, these three variables will convert this desire into a particular demand now going further with this concept of demand if i say i want to purchase a car which costs around 50 or 60 lakh and if i am not having that amount of money then does the desire can, can be converted into demand the answer to this question lies with ability and willingness so it means that if these three variables comes together and answer as yes then the, then a particular desire can be converted into a demand so uh, with this concept we are able to understand the difference between desire and demand now we understand the concept of demand now we want to know that how does demand is affecting uh, is taking place it is functioning in a market now it is it can be defined with the uh, with the law of demand now what is law of demand law of demand says that considering all the variables constant if the price of a commodity falls, then the demand of a particular commodity rises and vice versa. It means that demand is a function of n number of variables. Now what are those variables for which a demand is a function? So the variables which makes demand are price, income, price of related goods, advertisement, taste and preferences. Now let me define these variables one by one for you. Now upon understanding the concept of demand, let me introduce you to the law of demand. What is law of demand? Law of demand says that if considering all the variables constant, if a price of a commodity falls, then the quantity of the particular commodity demanded is rising and vice versa. Which means that if you plot a demand curve, if you plot a demand curve, considering price and quantity, price on y axis and quantity on x axis, if we say that price of a commodity is high, then the quantity demanded of that particular commodity is less. Suppose this is the point. And we say that price and quantity are inversely relation, uh, are, are in an inverse relationship in the case of a law of demand, which means that price and quantity are inversely related to each other, which means that if price goes up, 
quantity demanded goes down and price goes down quantity demanded goes up which means that the curve will be like this it is it would be a downward sloping curve which says that with the fall with, which says that with the fall in, which says that with the fall in price of a particular commodity the quantity demanded of that commodity rises and vice versa which means that when price moves downward quantity moves forward so this may be the case for price p1 quantity demanded is q1 and for price p2 quantity demanded is q2 which means that while moving from price p1 to p2 the quantity demanded has been increased from q1 to q2 they are in a inverse relationship now considering the concept of law of demand we have came to uh, we have came to uh, know about the fact that demand is a co demand comprises of various variable it means that demand is a function of five different elements these are price income price of related goods advertisement and taste and preferences now we have discussed about the relationship between price and demand price and quantity demanded which means that they are in a re inverse relationship now the next concept the next factor which affects the demand of a particular commodity is income what is income income is the earning of a individual or a household now income can be categorized into two sub categories these are real income and nominal income real income is the claim over goods and services whereas nominal income is its face value for example if i say that i earn rupees 10000 rupees per month it means that 10000 rupees is my nominal income now what is real income real income means the claim that i am having over goods and services with these 10000 rupees for example if i say that with this 10000 rupees i can buy two commodities of 5000 rupees each or i can buy four commodities of 2500 rupees each now at a particular time due to inflation the price of those commodities rises and the commodity which is which is earlier having a price of 5000 rupees now has been increased to 5500 and then it means that my nominal income remains the same which means that my income is rupees 10000 only but earlier i was able to buy two commodities of 5000 rupees each but now for buying those two commodities i need 11000 of rupees because the price of those commodity has been rise to 5500 from 5000 rupees it means that my claim over goods and services has been reduced it means that my real income has been reduced so this is what real income and nominal income now coming back to the factors that are affecting demand of a particular commodity we say that income of an individual or a household affect the demand of a particular commodity i'll explain these variable with the help of a graph now the next variable that affect the demand of a particular commodity is price of related goods now what are related goods related goods are classified into two categories these two categories are substituting goods and complementary goods now as the word indicates substituting goods substituting goods means the commodities that can be used as substitute from for one good to another good a best example for this is medicines now when we say that the medicine the generic medicines uh, these are the medicines which are having almost similar sort that a branded medicine is having but the price of the particular good is that medicine is less than the price of a particular commodity which has been given by which has been provided by a branded company so what are these two commodities these are two substituting goods which can be which can be used as a replacement for one another i can give another example if we go to a shop and i i need a toothpaste sometimes we have seen so many people they say that uh, please give me a colgate they don't purchase colgate they might be purchasing pepsodent or they might be purchasing any other toothpaste but they what they say they say it colgate it means that they are considering colgate as a substituting product for everything or they are buying a substituting product for colgate for uh, another example if we want to uh, if we want to consume a noodle we go to a we go to a shopkeeper and say please provide us a packet of maggi and if we do, if we do not have that maggi then we go for hippy or any other noodle ready uh, ready made noodle and we buy uh, we just return to home it means that what are these commodities these commodities are substituting good we might be using commodity a we might be using commodity b we might be using commodity c now the uses of these commodity is affected by various other variables we'll be, which will be discussing about uh, which will be discussing uh, further lectures now 
coming back to the complementary goods now what are complementary goods as the name suggests complementary goods means a good which complements another good the best example for these complementary goods are when we when we make a cup of tea see we all know that while making a cup of tea what we need we need water milk sugar and uh, tea uh, tea powder now these four things these four things go together to make a cup of tea which means that these four things are complementary goods to one another if they, if there arises a change in the price of any commodity then it is then it will be going to affect the price or the demand of the other commodity also for example if we say that at a particular point of time in a particular market if we say that price of sugar is 40 rupees per kg and due to some uh, circumstances the price of sugar rises to 80 rupees per kg which means that sugar is now two times costlier sugar is two times costlier than the previous price which may affect a family and reduce its consumption of tea now reduction of consumption of tea of a particular family of a, or a particular person results into uh, uh, limited consumption of tea also which means that if a family is consuming a uh, 1 kg of sugar and 1 kg of tea in a month and the price of sugar has been rise uh, has been risen to 80 rupees per kg from 40 rupees per kg it means that the family is now consuming only half kg of sugar in a month which result in which uh, which will result into reduction in the demand of tea and that uh, the, uh, then the uh, demand of tea also reduced to half a kg from 1 kg and this is how complementary goods affect the price, uh, affect the demand of one and another now the next variable that affect the demand of a particular commodity is its advertisement now advertisement what the what does advertiser do they place a particular product in the uh, in the uh, in the brain in the mind of a in the mind of a consumer and they create a demand for the particular product even then if we if we are aware that we need that product or not we just go towards that product and try to purchase that product and this is how advertising affect the demand of a particular product now going back to the fifth function fifth variable of the demand function which is taste and preferences now this variable is uh, irrespect it function irrespective of all the other variable which are affecting the demand it means that if a particular if a consumer is committed towards a particular brand it means that if a consumer says that i am going to buy shoes of nike if the consumer says i am going to buy an iphone or if a consumer says i want to buy a bmw car it means that it is irrespective of all other variables and this directly affect the demand of the demand of a particular commodity and which is not understandable because it is a brand because it is brand commitment and it is irrespective of other variables and it may varies as per the relationship between a consumer and their particular demand now let me explain the effect of these variables on the demand curve as i have already told you that the demand curve slopes downwards from left to right as we move now this is the price of a commodity and this is the quantity demanded of a particular commodity now see i am saying quantity demanded and the curve is downward sloping curve which slopes downward from origin this is origin which slopes downward from origin to quantity side now when we say that the price of a particular commodity is varying varying means if the price is increasing or the price is decreasing this variation in the price of that particular commodity affects the quantity demand of the quantity demanded of the particular commodity which means when the price falls then the quantity demanded increases and when the price rises quantity demanded was decreases it means that if if this is the original demand of a particular commodity if we say op1 oq1 if we say at a price of p1 price the quantity demanded is q1 then we say that that if prices rises from p1 to p2 then the quantity demanded has been reduced to q2 and similarly if the price falls from p1 to p3 then the quantity demanded has been increased to q3 
Now this movement, this movement along this demand curve due to the change in that particular price is known as is known as expansion and contraction which we say that movement along the demand curve which means that we are moving along the same demand curve this is the demand curve d1 d1 which has been created due to the particular price of that commodity and if the price falls the quantity expanded and if the price rises the quantity contracted it means that expansion of demand curve and contraction of demand curve expansion means due to the fall in price quantity demanded has been increased and vice versa which means that due to the rise in price the quantity demanded has been contracted which it, it is known as movement along the demand curve now how how does the remaining variables are affecting demand curve see now there is no scope now there is no scope of movement due to the due to the due to the change in price of that particular commodity now the effect the effect of remaining variables can be understand on the demand curve by using shifts of the demand curve now what are the shifts of the demand curve if i say that this is the previous demand curve d1 which is having a particular price and quantity relationship this is price p1 and this is quantity demanded q1 and price of the particular commodity is not changing it is constant now the price the factor which is changing is can be income of that particular consumer it can be price of the related good it can be effect of advertisement or building of branding or uh, uh, disloyalty of a brand or a customer towards a particular brand now effect of these four variable results into ex uh, expense shift of the demand curve in outward direction or inward direction which means that if a family is earning uh, in the pre as we have discussed in the previous example i have said that my income is 10000 rupees and earlier i was able to buy two commodities having 5000 rupees price of each commodity which is making it a total of 10000 rupees and if the price of the particular commodity has been increased from 5000 5000 to 5500 which means that the impact of inflation is 11000 of rupees and i say that my my income has been increased from 10000 rupees to 20000 rupees which means that now with increased income i would be able to buy more commodities which i was buying earlier which means that if at a at a price of 5000 rupees each and at a income level of 10000 i was able to buy two commodities and now with this increased income increased income means by increase of my income to rupees 20000 rupees i was i am able to buy four commodities of 5000 rupees this is the effect of nominal income whereas what would be the effect of real income if i say that my income is rupees 10000 only and the price of the commodity has gone downward direction from rupees 5000 to 2500 rupees then again at a at a income level of 10000 rupees i am able to buy four commodities of 25 2500 rupees each it means that either my real income has been increased or my nominal income income has been increased i am able to buy more commodity of that particular product of particular uh, the the particular demand has been expanded or has been shifted towards outward direction it means that the price level is still the same but due to the increase in my level of income or due to the increase yeah of price of uh, related good it means that might be there might be a situation that i am buying maggi and suddenly maggi became cost here so i have been shifted into yupi it means that demand of yupi has been increased so this is the effect of related good it means that at a particular price level the demand for a commodity has been increased and the demand curve has been shifted in outward direction so the new demand curve is d2 see the price is again the same but the quantity demanded has been increased to q2 so at same price level the demand of the commodity has been increased q1 to q2 and in in a similar manner suppose my income has been has been reduced from 10000 rupees to 7500 rupees but again the price of the commodity is 5000 of rupees it means that the total the net effect that i am having is a shortage of 2500 of rupees and as a result of which the demand for that particular commodity has been reduced and it can be plot it can be plotted as demand curve d3 d3 now the same price level but the demand has been reduced to 
टू थ्री दिस इज नोन एज इनवर्ड शिफ्ट आउटवर्ड शिफ्ट एंड इनवर्ड शिफ्ट ऑफ द डिमांड कर सो सी दिस इज द आउटवर्ड शिफ्ट ड्यू टू दू टू इंक्रीज इन इनकम और रिड्यूस इन प्राइस ऑफ रिलेटेड गुड्स एंड दिस इज इनवर्ड शिफ्ट ऑफ द डिमांड कर ड्यू टू रिड्यूस इन इनकम और इंक्रीज इन द प्राइस ऑफ रिलेटेड गुड और एनी अदर सिचुएशन मे बी डिफाइंड एज एज एन एन रिक्वायर नाउ दिस एवरीथिंग दैट वी आर स्टडिंग ओवर हेयर इज 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 इंडिविजुअल डिमांड नाउ सी एज वी आर अवेयर ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट इकोनॉमिक्स एज बीन डिवाइडेड इंटू टू ब्रांचेस द फर्स्ट वन इज माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स एंड द सेकंड वन इज माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स इन माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स वी स्टडी द इकोनॉमी एज एन एग्रीगेटेड यूनिट वेर एज इन माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स वी स्टडी ईच इकोनॉमिक एजेंट एज एन इंडिविजुअल एंटिटी नाउ हेयर वट वी आर डूइंग वी आर स्टडिंग द हाउस होल्ड इकोनॉमिक एजेंट्स वी आर स्टडिंग दैम एज अ एग्रीगेट कॉम्पिटिटी बट एट अ पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम दिस ग्राफ हैज बीन एक्सप्लेन टू यू कंसिडरिंग एन individual economic agent and then individual and then individual entity now when we say that we want to create a demand curve we want to create a aggregate demand curve then how it can be created now if i say that this is the demand curve of first consumer plus this is the demand curve of second consumer and so on and so forth and at the end of aggregation of all these demand curves the demand curve that we Okay, is known as aggregated demand curve. So then we are creating an aggregate demand curve. What do we do? We 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 submit all the demand curve of individual agents, and upon the aggregation of all those uh, all the demand curve of these economic individual economic agents, when we aggregate them, then we what we get is known as aggregate demand curve. Thank you very much.